flying with the Icelandic Coast Guard low over Grindavik's deserted streets, we followed the gash that has ripped the town apart. It zigzags through gardens and across roads. Steam rises from water pipes that have been shattered by the shifting ground. Grindavik looks like the set of a disaster movie, but just a few days ago, this was a thriving community. About a mile out of town is the area where scientists now believe a new eruption is most likely, molten rock just 500 metres below the surface. We landed nearby, standing on a barren moonscape. I am surrounded by a sea of lava. It is everywhere that I look, and it brings home how much material has come up from deep within the Earth to create Iceland. Oh, my God. It is a land of earthquakes. <laughs> but the intense tremors in Grindavik terrified those living there. Lilia and her family fled. It kept on going and went more and more and more. And the kids were getting scared. They were crying. The house was like, I, I can't explain it. It's like, I thought it was going on me. So it fall over? Yeah, I thought so. She only just remembered to grab precious family photos. Anything left behind could be destroyed. And do you think you will return to the village? No. Even if there's no eruption? No. I think the earthquakes, if it will be one earthquake, it will trigger me so much, I can't even... Uh, no, I don't want to go back. Not far from Grindavik are volcanic craters, the most recent from this summer. Lava still smoking on its slopes. They're trying to build defensive walls to protect a power station from a new eruption. But they are fighting immense forces of nature. Thomas Moore, Sky News, in southwest Iceland.